What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's recipe, I'm gonna be sharing my grandmother's recipe, my dad's mom's recipe for her crab soup. Now grandma makes the best crab soup I have ever had and I cannot wait to share this recipe with you guys. So let's get into our kitchens and put this dish together. To make this dish today, I had to pull out my big karahi because it's gonna make a nice big pot of soup. So in my karahi, I'm heating it up on a medium, medium high heat, and I'm going in with a little bit of olive oil as well as some butter. Now you can use one or the other, but I prefer to use a mixture of both. And once the butter has melted and the oil has heated up, we're gonna go in with some of our aromatics. So into the pot first, I'm gonna go in with some sliced onions and you don't wanna cut them too small because if you do, they'll just melt away into the soup and I prefer the soup to have a little bit of texture. And into that, I'm going in with some chopped pimento peppers, some hot peppers, as well as some chopped garlic. Now you can use whatever type of fresh seasonings that you have on hand. Go ahead and make this as per your own tastes and preferences. But basically, I'm gonna stir this up and allow it to fry or saute for about two minutes until it softens up. After about two minutes, you're gonna see that there's a little bit of color developing in the pan and the onions have cooked down a little. So at this point, I'm gonna go in with some chopped celery. Now I chopped the celery up pretty fine just because I don't like big chunks of celery in my soup. And once you give that celery a quick stir, you're gonna go in with some homemade green seasoning. You could use whatever fresh herbs you have on hand. If you wanna see how I put my green seasoning together, I'll have it linked right up here in the right hand corner. And besides that, I'm also gonna go in with some onion flakes. You could also use onion powder. And I'm also gonna go in with some dried Guyanese thyme. If you don't have dried Guyanese thyme, you can use regular fresh thyme. You could use the dried stuff, whatever you've got on hand, make use of it and put it in this dish. And I'm also gonna go in with two bay leaves. The bay leaves just allow it to get a really nice complex flavor as it is boiling and stewing away. And I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of salt as well as some black pepper so we can start building up the flavors of this dish. And once you add in all of those seasonings, you're gonna go ahead and stir it all up. You're gonna allow this to fry or saute for about a minute just so all of those spices and seasonings waken up. After about cooking for a minute, you are gonna go in with your crab. Now I'm using blue crab today, that's because we had this on hand. We basically cleaned the blue crab and we chopped them in half just so it could be easier when everybody eats it. And the reason why we added in here is because my grandma said when you fry this up with all of the seasonings, you actually start to make like somewhat of a crab broth or like a seafood broth. So this way you get a really flavorful crab soup in the end. So we put the crab in and we're gonna go ahead and saute it just until it browns a little bit and you see that the crab start to get a little pink. So that's gonna take about three to four minutes. And as soon as I added in my crab, I also went in with some freshly chopped scallions. A little tip for you guys, whenever you have a bunch of scallions that you either buy from the grocery store or that you're picking from your garden, you can go ahead and chop them up or wash them, then chop them up and then stick them in your freezer. They stay in the freezer for months at a time. Not that they last months at a time in my house, but honestly, um, it's just a really nice, easy thing to have on hand. So once you add that in, stir it up and allow it to fry for a little bit until the crab is sealed. Now it's been about four minutes for me and as you guys can see the crab gets nice and pink on the outside so it's starting to cook and you're gonna see a lot of little brown bits forming at the bottom of the pan. So at that point it is time to add in some liquid. I'm going in with an entire can of coconut milk. I really love the richness that it adds to the crab soup and I'm also gonna go in with some water. Basically we want to cover the crab and again like I said before we are essentially creating a crab broth so this way the entire soup is very complex and flavorful by the end. And after adding in all of those liquids, we're gonna raise the heat to the highest heat so this way it can come up to a boil. Now, while that's coming up to a rolling boil, I'm going in with some chopped carrots. I like to slice my carrots in like half moon shapes. You can cut them whatever way you want though. Basically, I'm gonna stir this up, I'm gonna cover it, and again, I'm gonna allow the crab to cook for a little bit so this way I can get all of the flavor extracted from that crab. It's been about 10 minutes at this point and as you guys can see the soup has thickened up a little bit and the broth has gotten a little bit darker. That's because the carrots have released some of their color and it just had a chance to cook and marry really really well. So at this point we're actually going to take out all of the pieces of crab and the reason why we take out all of the pieces of crab is because we want to go ahead now and cook all of our provisions or the root vegetables inside of this amazing broth that we just created. 
So all I'm doing is going in with a pair of tongs and I'm carefully fishing out every piece of crab that I had put in. Again, we created that broth, so now we want to use that flavorful broth to go ahead and flavor all of the provisions and allow those to cook down. If you were to just put the provisions in at this point and let it cook with the crab, it would overcook. Now I just want to season my broth a little bit more. Remember, we want to keep seasoning and adding in flavor as we go. So this way you have a very, very nice flavorful soup by the end. So I'm going in with some garlic powder. You could also chop some fresh garlic and put it in at this point as well. And I'm also going to go in with some all-purpose seasoning or Old Bay seasoning. Now the Old Bay is what I recommend just because it's a nice seafood seasoning. But if all you have is some all-purpose seasoning, go ahead and add that in. And another little addition that my grandmother does not put in, but I love the flavor of it, is this tagine seasoning. Basically, it is like a chili lime seasoning, so it adds a nice little sourness, a nice spiciness, and a saltiness as well. So I'm going in with a little bit of that, and I'm gonna mix it up really, really well until all of those flavoring agents are mixed up with the broth. Now at this point, I'm also gonna go in with my provisions. Now, today I'm using yams or like sweet potatoes, some cassava, as well as some plantains. Now, what I'm gonna do is put in my yams as well as the cassava that I've peeled and I've chopped, and I'm gonna allow those to boil about halfway, and at the halfway mark, then I'll add in the plantains. I only do this because the plantains tend to cook a little faster than these other root vegetables that are a little tougher. Now, it's been about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes, I will say, and what I did was I added in another pepper while this was boiling and I went ahead and I bursted it. I just found that the soup was not getting spicy enough so I had to add in another one. So as you guys can see the flavor keeps on deepening and it looks amazing. So my cassava as well as the yuca they are starting to soften up really well. They're not fully done yet but before they get fully done and before they start to overcook I want to go in with my plantains. So these plantains are not super green, but they're not super ripe, and that's just the texture that I like them at. So I went ahead and I peeled it, I cut them into big chunks, and I'm adding them in now, and I will allow this to cook until all of those root vegetables or provisions are fully cooked. So we are about six minutes away from that plantain being done cooking. So at that point, I'm going in with some chopped poi bhaji. This is fresh poi bhaji that I got from my garden. If you don't have poi bhaji, you can use some regular baby spinach and add it in. You could also use the frozen spinach that is in the freezer section. So I'm going to mix this up and I'm going to allow it to cook a little bit more. Now while your provisions are boiling away and they're almost done, you're going to start making your duff or the dumplings that's going to go into the soup. To me, a good crab soup always has some duff or some dumplings inside. So all we're going to do is in a bowl, we're going to add in some all-purpose flour. We're going to go in with some salt and we're also going to go in with some black pepper. And basically, we're just seasoning our duff. You don't have to add in all of these things. You could just put a pinch of salt if you wanted to, but I really like flavoring it really, really well. And on top of that, I'm going in with a little bit of garlic powder as well. And once you add in the salt, the garlic powder, and the black pepper, you're also going to go in with some granulated sugar. I like to add in granulated sugar just because I find that that sweet and the saltiness, they tend to pair well together. And I'm also going to go in with some softened to almost melted butter. I'm using unsalted butter just because that's what I have on hand, but if you have salted butter and you wanted to use that, feel free to do that as well. And lastly, I'm also going to go in with some baking powder. So at this point, you're going to go in with some clean hands and you're going to mix this up really, really well until everything is well combined. And then you're going to continuously add in a little bit of warm water at a time until you get a semi soft dough. Now, this dough is what you want to be like, almost like if you were making soda roti, you want it to be stiff, not too, too hard, but also not too soft, because if you make them too soft, what's going to happen is they're going to puff up in the soup. And then when you take off that heat, they're going to fall or get very gummy and dense on the inside. And that's not what we want. Now, once all the provisions are done cooking and they're fork tender, it's time to go back in with the crab. Remember, we cooked the crab about three quarters of the way early on in the process because we wanted to extract all of the flavor from it. So once you add it into here, you're going to stir it up really, really well. And we're going to allow this to boil for just about five to ten minutes so the crab can finish cooking and so everything can just marry together in the pot. Now it's been about five to six minutes and I had my crab cooking and finishing up. It is all done and now this last part is to put in the duff or the dumplings. So basically I'm just ripping off small pieces of dough and then I'm rolling them in between my hands to make elongated shapes. If you wanted to, you could also go ahead and just rip off pieces of the dough, throw it in as is, or you could also go ahead and roll them into balls. 
People make their dumplings or their duff in so many different shapes and sizes. You can do it whichever way that you feel is right. So I'm going to continue rolling them into logs and laying them on the top of my soup just like this. And once I get them all on the top layer of the soup, I'm going to lower my heat to about a medium, medium low heat and I'm going to put the cover on. And once I put that cover on, I'm going to allow it to sit there for about five to 10 minutes and then we'll open the cover and we'll show you what it looks like. So after exactly 10 minutes, I went ahead and I opened up the cover. Remember after I added in the dumplings, I had covered it and I allowed it to rest for about 10 minutes or bubble away for about 10 minutes. Now, as you guys can see, those dumplings or the duff have increased in size really, really well. And because we did not make that dough too, too soft, they are going to stay nice and fluffy in the middle. So other than that, give this a quick taste for salt and seasonings, adjust accordingly. And now your soup is ready to serve. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet and become part of the Matthews Guyanese cooking family and leave those comments down below. Bye everyone.